Sarah Breedlove December 23, 1867 to May 25, 1919, known as Madam C. J. Walker, was an African-American entrepreneur, philanthropist, and a political and social activist. Eulogized as one of the first female self-made millionaire in the United States, she became one of the wealthiest self-made women in America and one of the most successful women and African-American business owners ever. The first female self-made millionaire, however, was Annie Turnbow Malone, the woman who educated and trained Walker. Walker made her fortune by developing and marketing a line of beauty and hair products for black women through Madam C. J. Walker Manufacturing Company, the successful business she founded. Walker was also known for her philanthropy and activism. She made financial donations to numerous organizations and became a patron of the arts. Villa Lawaro, Walker's lavish estate in Irvington on Hudson, New York, served as a social gathering place for the African American community. <laughs> Early life Breedlove was born on December 23, 1867, near Delta, Louisiana, to Owen and Minerva Anderson Breedlove. Sarah was one of six children, which included an older sister, Lovania, and four brothers, Alexander, James, Solomon, and Owen Jr. Breedlove's parents and her older siblings were enslaved on Robert W. Burney's Madison Parish Plantation, but Sarah was the first child in her family born into freedom after the Emancipation Proclamation was signed. Her mother died, possibly from cholera, in 1872, her father remarried, but he died within a few years. Orphaned at the age of seven, Sarah moved to Vicksburg, Mississippi, at the age of ten and worked as a domestic. Prior to her first marriage, she lived with her older sister, Lovania, and brother-in-law, Jesse Powell. Marriage and family In 1882, at the age of 14, Sarah married Moses McWilliams, possibly to escape mistreatment from her brother-in-law. Sarah and Moses had one daughter, Lelia McWilliams, born on June 6, 1885. When Moses died in 1887, Sarah was 20, Lelia was two years old. Sarah remarried in 1894, but left her second husband, John Davis, around 1903 and moved to Denver, Colorado. In 1905, in January 1906, Sarah married Charles Joseph Walker, a newspaper advertising salesman she had known in Missouri. Through this marriage, she became known as Madam C.J. Walker. The couple divorced in 1912, Charles died in 1926. Lelia McWilliams adopted her stepfather's surname and became known as Alelia Walker. Topic: <laughs> Career. In 1888, Sarah and her daughter moved to St. Louis, Missouri, where three of her brothers lived. Sarah found work as a laundress, barely earning more than a dollar a day, but she was determined to make enough money to provide her daughter with a formal education. During the 1880s, Breedlove lived in a community where ragtime music was developed. She sang at the St. Paul African Methodist Episcopal Church and started to yearn for an educated life as she watched the community of women at her church. As was common among black women of her era, Sarah experienced severe dandruff and other scalp ailments, including baldness, due to skin disorders and the application of harsh products such as lye that were included in soaps to cleanse hair and wash clothes. Other contributing factors to her hair loss included poor diet, illnesses, and infrequent bathing and hair washing during a time when most Americans lacked indoor plumbing, central heating and electricity. Initially, Sarah learned about hair care from her brothers, who were barbers in St. Louis. Around the time of the Louisiana Purchase Exposition World's Fair at St. Louis in 1904, she became a commission agent selling products for Annie Turnbow Malone, an African-American hair care entrepreneur, millionaire, and owner of the Poro Company. While working for Malone, who would later become Walker's largest rival in the hair care industry, Sarah began to take her knowledge of hair learned from selling Annie Malone's hair products to develop her own product line. In July 1905, when she was 37 years old, Sarah and her daughter moved to Denver, Colorado, where she continued to sell products for Malone and develop her own hair care business. A controversy developed between Annie Malone and Sarah because it was Malone's hair growing formula that Sarah was using to market as her own. 
Following her marriage to Charles Walker in 1906, she became known as Madame C. J. Walker and marketed herself as an independent hairdresser and retailer of cosmetic creams. Madam was adopted from women pioneers of the French beauty industry. Her husband, who was also her business partner, provided advice on advertising and promotion. Sarah sold her products door to door, teaching other black women how to groom and style their hair. In 1906, Walker put her daughter in charge of the mail order operation in Denver while she and her husband traveled throughout the southern and eastern United States to expand the business. In 1908 Walker and her husband relocated to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, where they opened a beauty parlor and established Lelia College to train hair culturists. After closing the business in Denver in 1907, Alelia ran the day-to-day -day operations from Pittsburgh, while Walker established a new base in Indianapolis in 1910. Alelia also persuaded her mother to establish an office and beauty salon in New York City's Harlem neighborhood in 1913. In 1910, Walker relocated her business to Indianapolis, where she established the headquarters for the Madame C. J. Walker Manufacturing Company. She initially purchased a house and factory at 640 Northwest Street. Walker later built a factory, hair salon, and beauty school to train her sales agents, and added a laboratory to help with research. She also assembled a competent staff that included Freeman Ransom, Robert Lee Brokenberg, Alice Kelly, and Marjorie Stewart Joyner, among others, to assist in managing the growing company. Many of her company's employees, including those in key management and staff positions, were women. To increase her company's sales force, Walker trained other women to become beauty culturists using the Walker system. Her method of grooming that was designed to promote hair growth and to condition the scalp through the use of her products. Walker's system included a shampoo, a pomade stated to help hair grow, strenuous brushing, and applying iron combs to hair. This method claimed to make lackluster and brittle hair become soft and luxurious. Walker's product line had several competitors. Similar products were produced in Europe and manufactured by other companies in the United States, which included her major rivals, Annie Turnbow Malone's Poro system from which she derived her original formula and later, Sarah Spencer Washington's Apex system. Between 1911 and 1919, during the height of her career, Walker and her company employed several thousand women as sales agents for its products. By 1917 the company claimed to have trained nearly 20,000 women. Dressed in a characteristic uniform of white shirts and black skirts and carrying black satchels, they visited houses around the United States and in the Caribbean offering Walker's hair pomade and other products packaged in tin containers carrying her image. Walker understood the power of advertising and brand awareness. Heavy advertising, primarily in African American newspapers and magazines, in addition to Walker's frequent travels to promote her products, helped make Walker and her products well known in the United States. Walker's name became even more widely known by the 1920s, after her death, as her company's business market expanded beyond the United States to Cuba, Jamaica, Haiti, Panama, and Costa Rica. In addition to training in sales and grooming, Walker showed other black women how to budget, build their own businesses, and encouraged them to become financially independent. In 1917, inspired by the model of the National Association of Colored Women, Walker began organizing her sales agents into state and local clubs. The result was the establishment of the National Beauty Culturists and Benevolent Association of Madam C. J. Walker Agents predecessor to the Madam C. J. Walker Beauty Culturists Union of America. Its first annual conference convened in Philadelphia during the summer of 1917 with 200 attendees. The conference is believed to have been among the first national gatherings of women entrepreneurs to discuss business and commerce. During the convention Walker gave prizes to women who had sold the most products and brought in the most new sales agents. She also rewarded those who made the largest contributions to charities in their communities. <laughs> <laughs> Activism and philanthropy As Walker's wealth and notoriety increased, she became more vocal about her views. In 1912 Walker addressed an annual gathering of the National Negro Business League NNBL from the convention floor, where she declared, I am a woman who came from the cotton fields of the South. From there I was promoted to the washtub. From there, I was promoted to the cook kitchen. And from there, I promoted myself into the business of manufacturing hair goods and preparations. I have built my own factory on my own ground. 
The following year, she addressed convention goers from the podium as a keynote speaker. She helped raise funds to establish a branch of the Young Men's Christian Association (YMCA) in Indianapolis's black community, pledging $1,000 to the building fund for the Senate Avenue YMCA. Walker also contributed scholarship funds to the Tuskegee Institute. Other beneficiaries included Indianapolis's Flanner House and Bethel African Methodist Episcopal Church, Mary McLeod Bethune's Daytona Education and Industrial School for Negro Girls, which later became Bethune Cookman University in Daytona Beach, Florida, the Palmer Memorial Institute in North Carolina, and the Haynes Normal and Industrial Institute in Georgia. Walker was also a patron of the arts. About 1913, Walker's daughter, Alelia, moved to a new townhouse in Harlem, and in 1916, Walker joined her in New York, leaving the day-to-day -day operation of her company to her management team in Indianapolis. In 1917 Walker commissioned Vertner Tandy, the first licensed black architect in New York City and a founding member of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity, to design her house in Irvington on Hudson, New York. Walker intended for Villa Lawaro, which cost $250,000 to build, to become a gathering place for community leaders and to inspire other African Americans to pursue their dreams. She moved into the house in May 1918 and hosted an opening event to honor Emmett J. Scott, at that time the Assistant Secretary for Negro Affairs of the U.S. Department of War. Walker became more involved in political matters after her move to New York. She delivered lectures on political, economic, and social issues at conventions sponsored by powerful black institutions. Her friends and associates included Booker T. Washington, Mary McLeod Bethune, and W. E. B. Du Bois. During World War I Walker was a leader in the Circle for Negro War Relief and advocated for the establishment of a training camp for black army officers. In 1917 she joined the Executive Committee of New York Chapter of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People NAACP, which organized the silent protest parade on New York City's Fifth Avenue. The public demonstration drew more than 8,000 African Americans to protest a riot in East St. Louis that killed 39 African Americans. Profits from her business significantly impacted Walker's contributions to her political and philanthropic interests. In 1918, the National Association of Colored Women's Clubs (NACWC) honored Walker for making the largest individual contribution to help preserve Frederick Douglass's Anacostia House. Before her death in 1919, Walker pledged $5,000 the equivalent of about $65,000 in 2012 to the NAACP's anti-lynching fund. At the time it was the largest gift from an individual that the NAACP had ever received. Walker bequeathed nearly $100,000 to orphanages, institutions, and individuals. Her will directed two-thirds of future net profits of her estate to charity. Death and legacy Walker died on May 25, 1919, from kidney failure and complications of hypertension at the age of 51. Walker's remains are interred in Woodlawn Cemetery in the Bronx, New York City. At the time of her death, Walker was considered to be the wealthiest African American woman in America. She was eulogized as the first female self-made millionaire in America, and Walker's estate was worth an estimated $600,000 about $8 million in present-day dollars upon her death. According to Walker's New York Times obituary, she said herself two years ago in 1917 that she was not yet a millionaire, but hoped to be some time. At the time of Walker's death, the average American's annual salary was $750. Her daughter, Alelia Walker, became the president of the Madam C. J. Walker Manufacturing Company. Walker's personal papers are preserved at the Indiana Historical Society in Indianapolis. Her legacy also continues through two properties listed on the National Register of Historic Places Villa Lawaro in Irvington, New York, and the Madam Walker Theater Center in Indianapolis. Villa Lawaro was sold following Alelia Walker's death to a fraternal organization called the Companions of the Forest in America in 1932. The house was listed on the National Register of Historic Places in 1979. The National Trust for Historic Preservation has designated the privately owned property a national treasure. 
Indianapolis's Walker Manufacturing Company headquarters building, renamed the Madam Walker Theater Center, opened in December 1927. It included the company's offices and factory as well as a theater, beauty school, hair salon and barbershop, restaurant, drugstore, and a ballroom for the community. The building was listed on the National Register of Historic Places in 1980. In 2006, playwright and director Regina Taylor wrote The Dreams of Sarah Breedlove, recounting the history of Walker's struggles and success. The play premiered at the Goodman Theatre in Chicago. Actress L. Scott Caldwell played the role of Walker. On March 4, 2016, skincare and haircare company Sundial Brands launched a collaboration with Sephora in honor of Walker's legacy. The launch, titled Madam C. J. Walker Beauty Culture, comprised four collections and focused on the use of natural ingredients to care for different types of hair. As of 2017, actress Octavia Spencer has committed to portray Walker in a TV series based on the biography of Walker by Alelia Bundles, Walker's great great granddaughter. Tributes <inaudible> 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 Various scholarships and awards have been named in Walker's honor. The Madam C. J. Walker Business and Community Recognition Awards are sponsored by the National Coalition of 100 Black Women, Oakland, Bay Area Chapter. An annual luncheon honors Walker and awards outstanding women in the community with scholarships. Spirit Awards have sponsored the Madam Walker Theater Center in Indianapolis. Established as a tribute to Walker, the annual awards have honored national leaders in entrepreneurship, philanthropy, civic engagement, and the arts since 2006. Awards presented to individuals include the Madam C. J. Walker Heritage Award as well as Young Entrepreneur and Legacy Prizes. Walker was inducted into the National Women's Hall of Fame in Seneca, New York, in 1993. In 1998, the U.S. Postal Service issued a Madam Walker commemorative stamp as part of its Black Heritage series. <laughs> 